Hi, I'm Ed. I'm Phoebe. And we're going to be talking with Toronto Unicorn today, finding out a little bit more about her and what she does and her neck of the woods, because we're we're quite a bit south from her and uh, things are a little different here than there. And we'd like to find out, how should we make a vacation up to Toronto <laughs> and how much fun would it be? Welcome to Swinger University with Ed and Phoebe. Our podcast, we started our podcast about ooh, three years ago now, didn't really actively market it. And we we're under, you know, the cover of no faces. Right. And we decided in last year that we were just going to come out. We checked our clauses with our work and we decided we're safe. And you know what? Uh, we value the community. We've been part of this community for 10 years. And we really want to bring more light and focus to non-monogamy and, and how people define their relationships in different ways. Uh, it's so diverse and it's so wonderful. And the community is amazing. I mean, it's, it's not just about the sex. People think swinger and it's all about sex, but it's not. I mean, it's there, obviously, but... You, you have this sense of freedom to be part of this greater community and, and, and feel and express the way you like to and do what you want. There's, there's just no like layer or curtains over you. It's, it's amazing. I just love it. So we really want to support the community and, um, you know, start removing some of those, you know, negative stigmas on, you know, a marriage that doesn't look like, you know, the normal two-person marriage, right? Between a man and a woman. So um, that's what we are doing with our podcast now, trying to be... And how do you feel with your faces out there and actually representing this community? Because I know I get the same sense of, I feel a sense of pride representing this community, or at least one face of it. And so I want to get your take. Like, Do you have any regrets about showing your face? No. N not so far. Not so far. Um, <laughs> But but we also have realized that we're not as big as a lot of other podcasts and we're growing. We're growing pretty quickly now in the last year. Um, so, you know, there's still opportunity for bad things to happen. We just haven't seen them yet. So far, it's been really, really positive. It has been really positive. Right. Yeah. And that's fair, right? That's fair to say, hey, man, so far, so good. But like, you know, we're like, you know, five miles down a long highway. Like, let's see how this goes. That's right. fair. They also said I might regret like not having kids and stuff. And I'm like, well, so far I don't. But like, you know, <laughs> maybe in my 80s, <laughs> but so far I don't. I was told um, that also, great. and I have not regretted that function either. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. I like, I just got familiar with your podcast recently. In fact, I just became familiar with podcasts in general recently. Um, I had never really listened to any. Um, and so then I created one without having a history of listening to them. So, you know, I am learning as I go. And so I did take a peek at yours and I noticed that with yours, even though you're offering information in the same space, you guys come at it with a much more like, I love the name university because it's like researched. You come researched. When I heard Ed talk about the different materials and condoms, I was like, no one will ever expect this on my channel or my podcast because I would be like, oh, that's book smart shit. I don't want that. You know, I'm more like, you know, you'll feel if it's girthy, like, you know, so I talk differently than you do. And everybody relates to people differently. And so I found it to be really refreshing also. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we try and keep it a little less nerdy than full nerd, but yeah, yeah it is. It's very very much research based and very much of an educational podcast, but we like to have fun too and um, not lose so much of the fun in the, the message of what that podcast is about. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I like appealing to the, the logical mind, you know, the, the, the reasons why, and, and, and honestly, a lot of the stuff that we present is, out of my own frustrations of and experiences, right? I had to do all this research on condoms because I was having an issue with them. So hence yep. the deep dive into condom research. Yeah, exactly. And, and to be honest with you, some of those things really matter. When you explain the functional reasons, the logical brain, as you said, 
you're connecting to somebody who might be otherwise completely lost. How do I pick a fucking condom? That one says mega. That one says, you know, bam. I don't know. Maybe I'm, you know, they're, they're, it's all marketing. But to them, they're like, well, I feel bam today. Maybe I'll take bam. But that's like exactly. the wrong one, right? So exactly. I think there's really good help out there. So, and, and again, you guys also do swinger cruises and lifestyle resorts. I have uh, never gone to one of those yet. Oh, oh my, my gosh, you should go. Now, to clarify, we... We have, we have been on, ooh, let's see. We've been on how many cruises now? Three, four? Three. Three. But we've never been to the big lifestyle resorts like in Jamaica or Mexico. But I will say we've interviewed about 80 people about them. And we just can't pull the trigger because from where we live, it's a big travel commitment. It's a big cost commitment and for and you can't leave the resort and honestly i like to explore i'm an explorer and you know you can't do that so um and there's and they can they they have their pros and cons and we have episodes and blogs on that too but we love the cruises because they're more affordable and there's like three thousand people sometimes six thousand people and you can find something for everybody it's it's like create your own vacation, honestly. It's amazing. You would love it. Is, is it usually a full takeover of Swinger Lifestyle? Or yeah. sometimes it like a half, half season? No, no, full. So, so the, the whole boat is lifestyle friendly. Um, there, there's no civilians on board. And other than the crew, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but I, I, I'm coming from ground zero. What yeah. does lifestyle friendly mean on a crew? Yeah, yeah. So the, the, there are people who are nudists and are just comfortable being around swingers. So not everybody on the ship is an actual full swap swinger or soft swap swinger. Right. Okay. But you're you're not going to mix your Disney crew with <laughs> this crew. You're not going to confuse this with a, uh, a a carnival fun line kind of a, a ship. Yeah. It's it's definitely geared towards. Being naked, having naked fun with naked people. And when the ship is a mile from port, everyone can be naked at the pool. And until you get close to port again, you can be naked all day long at the pool. You can't be naked in the hallways. You have to wear a robe or bathing suit or, you know, whatever. And, of course, in the restaurants. But it's there's a lot of naked all the time. And they have playrooms outside, too. So if you want to get it on in the breeze and the in the ship air, it's crazy. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So you, there's like lots of play areas. Can you have sex anywhere on this cruise pretty much? They have designated areas okay. because they're staffed for your safety. And then the staff make sure everything is clean and they change the sheets for you and they take care of the trash. So it's actually really nice. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. I can imagine that that could feel like a very large boat at times, but if you have a bad hookup, it could feel like a small boat also. (laughs) You're like, okay, well, we're stuck with these people in the same, like, nightlife every night, you know? So, but that actually brings me into the culture, right, uh, of the swinger lifestyle is be careful where you step uh, and how you step on people because this is a very close-knit community, as many will learn, some the hard way. And so you really do want to make sure every encounter is respectful, even if you don't want to see somebody again. You know, um, I've, I've personally run into people over and over and over again that um, I didn't plan to see again. <laughs> you know? So very, very much so. Yes. Yes. There's a lot of, um, you know, just a lot of social graces that you have to, you know, be aware of. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's. It's a new etiquette, a new sub. It's a subculture that comes with almost its its own, you know. What's it called? I, I guess Bill of Freedoms. I don't know. What do you want to call it? It's just we we come as lifestyle. You're expected to be non-judgmental towards others and accepting. Um, and it's kind of like it's like these unwritten but written rules because like if you violate them, like it's a serious thing. But like so, uh, your podcast, my content, because I have a podcast and a YouTube channel, is really here to try and educate people so that they can be the they can thrive in this lifestyle they're not going to fumble the ball and fuck up and, and lose their erection to a, a free condom that was you know one size too small if they if they follow us they're going to be in better shape agreed agreed absolutely <laughs> because those opportunities are very fleeting sometimes 
because the average swinger is really only in the lifestyle about 18 months. They get in and they get out. It's pretty rare that somebody stays in the community for years and years. Really? I didn't mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Is yeah. that like a personal anecdote or is it something you've seen in your research? We have a really good friend who's a lifestyle promoter. She throws parties. She used to do it every month, but she does three big events where she gathers six to 800 people for every event three or four times a year. And she's been doing this for 20 years. And that's the the statistics that she gave us um, when she sees wow. the turnover. It's it's pretty incredible. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Cause I know that for me, um, I've been in the lifestyle for about three years now, roughly. So I, I know what I see and, and what I don't see, but I don't know what happens when they leave the club, the sex club, right? <laughs> it was like, I see the happy swingers at the sex club, but like, I don't have to go home with them and, and have the feels, you know? So it's, it's interesting to think that some people can, they can spend a few years doing this and it doesn't mean that they're like forever life, you know, they're always swingers that they can actually just fluidly go in and out. That's yeah. very, that's good for some people to hear. Yeah. 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 And we talk about it yeah. at, from the standpoint that y- you can get to a point in the lifestyle where you're just not comfortable with it anymore or, or it just, you know, it doesn't do anything for you and it's okay. You can change hobbies. You know, you don't have to stick with it just because you started down the path yep. and how you play can drastically change from month to month to year to year. So, you know, make it what is comfortable for you. Mm hmm. You say how you play could change. Can you explain? Yeah. So you may start off. We started off soft swap because full swap was too intimidating. Didn't know what was really going to happen. And we quickly, you know, moved into full swap after a few experiences because it really didn't seem like that was a a difficult transition. It really seemed kind of natural. And it also depends on your situation and the couple you're with. Right. And so now we gosh we're in it about 10 years and i'm growing comfortable with just watching and watching was very difficult for me in the very beginning and now with the right couple in the right environment you know there are certain parties that there are familiar faces and the environment's familiar and i'm comfortable in that environment where i can just sit back and eat popcorn and watch it have sex with somebody and that's totally fine i'm loving it and so that's very new to me in the last six months so that's kind of cool and new and i didn't think i was bi either and so now i define myself as bi i'm enjoying more woman experiences and i'm really wanting to seek that out like i'm 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 actively wanting to have those more of those experiences i've had enough dick and i think i just want some more pussy <laughs> wow i do have to say that most women i know who have identified as straight changed when they entered the lifestyle but like for example i have i was i had never had even an interest in in women and then now i you know i like pussy like the best of them i don't know (laughs) it happened quickly um you know and my friend r who i feature on my youtube channel straight woman has never had she she said that she had a phobia of the vagina she's like it's just like i don't want to go in there like she's just no anyway she found herself in a in kind of like a thruple situation with another woman and another guy who they all are into each other individually and as a group and she's like into this specific woman and she's like what the fuck like what the fuck like i was straight you know and she's like what does this mean and i was like you know what it doesn't fucking mean anything because mm-hmm. once we stop putting ourselves in these little tiny boxes and we instead pursue like a lifestyle of hedonistic pleasure or hedonism, suddenly we don't have to keep defining what pleasure currently is to us. We can just say that we've decided to seek a life of pleasure, a life of pleasure and uh, we don't have to keep changing what that means to us, you know? Ooh, yeah, I like that. We don't yeah. have to, we just decide to seek a life of pleasure. I like that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had that identity crisis years ago. And, you know, you the the, the definitions of, you know, oh gosh, I'm bi from the waist up, I'm bi from the waist down, or I'm bi selectively bi, yeah. or blah, you know, and the definition on the profile changed so many times. And then finally I just said, ah, oh, screw it. I'm just going to say I'm bi. And, and really honestly <laughs> took one of my friends to say, you know, just because you uh, like women, you find them attractive and you, and you enjoy kissing them and fondling their breasts and, 
and whatever else that you find pleasurable doesn't mean you're into all women. So don't put pressure on yourself. Like you go to a party and just because you have identify that or you've got that on your profile, that all of a sudden every woman's going to be attractive and that you need to get with every woman. And because she's like, you don't want to get with every man. And I go, no. And she's like, well, there you go. And for some reason, once that she said it, the pressure was lifted off. And I was like, all right, yeah. I'm free. <laughs> That's fantastic to hear. Yeah. Well, what I found interesting is uh, most of my female friends in the lifestyle, I don't, I don't play with. They're just the girls that fuck beside me. You yeah. know, and so it, it, I'm also bi, but I'm like, I'm not going to be bi with you. <laughs> I'll be bi with her, but like not with you. <laughs> so it's just mm. funny how how much at the, at the beginning I thought it was so much about sex, but you can exist as a person in this lifestyle and have your sexual contribution be secondary. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I right. really love our community. And and so much of sexuality is is fluid um, from day to day, from event to event. You know, sometimes you just don't feel sexy mm -hmm. and or you don't feel that anybody else is sexy, which is <laughs> often the case. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, it's OK to just hang out and have a drink and have yeah, sexy conversation. conversation. Maybe maybe not tonight, but maybe next time. So. You kind of leave the door open. And I think that's the thing that we really enjoy about the lifestyle is it's OK. Whatever thing you have, whatever sexuality you have at the moment, at that time, everybody's going to be like, cool, good for you. Yeah. 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 It's true. It's very true. I could be like, I've decided to be, you know, a muff diver today. Like, but, you know, people will be like, okay, great. Like, Want any help? Like you know, like do any tips? That, you know, people really don't judge, and it's like that's just what happens when you give people a blank slate, you know, of of judgment free arena, and you can play where you want. Suddenly, they want to play in places they didn't know they wanted to play in. Oh, for uh, sure. And I happen, to, I happen to mention this almost everywhere I go because it's so important. But every straight man, also that or identified man, has also confessed to me that they have either already sucked dick or they want to suck dick. <laughs> I have found. I like to say it this way, like there's usually just one male exception that I have uh, that has never really confided in me that that has been something he wants. But the, the what I'm finding is the more sexuality becomes more comfortable and the more group dynamics come, suddenly it's so much, it's not so much about that, it's, like a, it's a sexual organ, it's, it's, it's John's penis instead of a dick. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like you're, you're allowed to touch and make moaning sound, you know, and it just becomes Guys, I'm telling you that they, they are just as fluid as we are when we join this lifestyle. The more the more you don't judge them, you know, and I just love it to love to see it because I feel bad for even, you know, being closeted or, or, or helping the closeted feeling any 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 amount of my life because that time is over, you know, and it's time to to get out and live your life. So I agree. Yeah. I agree. It's time to explore. I know. Yeah. I want to know about Toronto. So I am, uh, you know, in the sex positive lifestyle downtown Toronto, which is in Canada, uh, very cold in the winter. But uh, we have uh, luckily about five or four or five different sex clubs in the same, um, I would say, 20, 30 minute drive. What? Yeah. So we're very fortunate um, to the point where we're like, what mood are you in? Do you want to oh. dance or do you want to be in a spa? Like we're, we have those kind of problems to decide wow. which sex club vibe we're into that oh. night. Right. So, and so I feel bad saying, like, you know, <laughs> we're feasting. Where are you from? What, what state? California. And we're in Sacramento. Okay. Well, I know many swingers in, in, in California, but it sounds like you just don't have the clubs, right? Yeah. In, in our particular county in Sacramento, we are not allowed to have sex clubs. As a matter of fact, strip clubs won't uh, even allow you to serve alcohol at the same time. So if there's naked boobies or na full nudity, there is no alcohol. Yeah, it sucks. Wow. And that is also true in the county uh, where San Francisco is. Yeah. Yeah. Most strip clubs are pretty limited in terms of what you can do. But in terms of swing clubs... Um, Sacramento County will not allow any kind of sex clubs, but San Francisco does get away with it. And they have, we have one club there, um, called twist. Uh, it's quite popular because it's, it's the only one. pretty much the only game in town. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah, we like that club. Okay. It's it's nice. They have a DJ, they have food, they have a, a little fireplace in there, they have a stripper pole, dance floor, and then these this locker room that is kind of in the middle where you transition from the dance floor and the bar area and it's of course it's BYOB and then you you put your stuff in the lockers and you put on a towel and you head to the playroom and it's like a, a sultan's oh gosh bedroom there's the floors are just covered with you know nice beds and um, sheets and and stuff and there's curtains and the lighting is all moody and sexy it's fabulous and it's wow it's very popular fantastic uh, well, we have like five. So I'll tell you my favorite yes. one is Oasis Aqua Lounge. It's downtown Toronto. It is a kind of a taken over old mansion. So it's three floors and it has this outdoor heated pool open all year round. Mm. And so I was there, you know, twice this week already. And the steam would just be rising off our bodies to the point where I was like, look, I'm an angel because the steam. And like when you're making out in the steam, of the, like it is just been, it's fantastic. It is spectacular. And then you go in, there's a sauna, a hot tub, there's multiple floors, different playrooms, a dungeon, they have spectator sex, you know, so there's lots of lots to do. So that's where I like to go the most. We also have uh, the X Club, NYX Lounge, and M4, which are more dance club type of, um, there's no pool, there's no spa, and there's... They all have a different feel to them. So some of them are nightclub dance clubs with a back room. Uh, some of them are more swinger social clubs. And M4, I find to be a bit more in your face intense uh, in terms of they have like structured three or four hour events and then they close the club. They clean it for like a couple hours and they open it for another structured time. And yeah. so that's different than Oasis. Oasis, you pay for all day. You go, you in and out. People leave for dinner, go back. It's relaxing. Oh, At M4, wow. you're there for a four-hour gangbang retreat, essentially. <laughs> you know, so it's whatever you're in the mood for. If you need to get, you know, something quick, maybe that's that's the mood you're in. But hmm. so luckily, just in case any of your listeners know, don't know or, or viewers, I have uh, done some video tours of all of these clubs in Toronto <sighs> and the surrounding area, and I put them on YouTube so that everybody can see the inside of these clubs, including nice. the play areas when they were closed. Because honestly, I is how could you not take a peek, you know? And there's glory holes. There's female glory holes at Club M4, where you can stick your ass and pussy in at one side and just, you know, wait for something to happen on the other. It's just, it's fantastic to see the variety that's offered. So as a single woman in the lifestyle, I'm able to go to these clubs with my friends. We get dressed up and dance sometimes. So it's just kind of like normal clubbing life, but with the, the, you know, the elevated level of sex positive. And we don't feel judged anymore. We don't feel judged by our bodies. And so we, I shake it as if there's no jiggle where there shouldn't be jiggle. And it doesn't matter because it's finally, you know, you take the benefits of the sex positive swinger lifestyle, which is the accepting environment and you add that into you know now you're clubbing and now i'm dancing on the stripper pole like i give zero <laughs> shit how it looks you know very yeah. cool where before i might be more self-conscious now this time i'm just letting my hair fly so i love yeah, it so that i would say that that's the culture in toronto well how about um, you know how it sounds very safe sounds like you're having a great time with your friends and so then is the single male element not uh, rude? Are they very respectful? Do you have to worry about that? So, when, so many people are concerned about that dynamic in the club. Talk about some of that. Yeah. So every club has different rules about single men, but for the most part, there's usually nights of the week where they're not allowed. So for a waste stock mm. lounge, they're not allowed Fridays or Saturdays. Um, and so it's just couples and single women those nights. Then there's other nights where men are allowed, but they might not be allowed on the third floor of Oasis, which is basically where all the sex happens, mm -hmm. unless they're with somebody, you know, a partner like of the opposite sex. So there's, even if they're allowed in the club, they're still not allowed in certain spaces. And that's because when you do allow single men into all of the club, those are what we call DTF nights. And they walk around holding their dick, watching everyone. And not everyone's in the mood for that. So... You know, we kind of keep those to very intense nights, let the single men roam free those nights. And then, you know, you know right. give me a little more eye contact the next time I hang out with you, you know? So I love the theme nights though, but one of the most surprising things you will learn about sex clubs is that the single women from 
I'm a single woman and I have single women friends and there is consensus, okay? We do not like sex clubs when single men are not allowed because the amount of attention we get when it's just couples and us is insufficient. Uh... It's significant. I went to Unicorn Night three days ago. Unicorn Night, pussy was shaved. I was in the right mood. I came home empty handed. <sighs> Think about that. Single woman wearing a unicorn horn on Unicorn Night no one asked for sex. Uh, Wild. Oh my I mean, God. I, no I, I would need more connection, but, but still no one asked, you know? Um, I'm telling you, this is why we go when single men are there. So even if you're a couple looking for a unicorn, go on nights when single men are there. That's where they are. <laughs> because we don't want to work so fucking hard. I don't want to have to go through one woman just to get a dick. I can get a dick on my own, you know? Right, That's that makes interesting. sense. Interesting, and well, what's su- a little surprising about that is the whole name unicorn came about from the rarity, like the impossible, you know, hunt. And yet, here you were, gorgeous unicorn, walking around a club, and nobody was trying to <laughs> bang you. <laughs> like, well, there was probably somebody, but you clearly went home empty-handed, so to speak. So, wow, yeah, interesting. that's interesting. And it's not a fluke. I have a YouTube video because I vlog about going to sex clubs. I don't know if you guys, if your viewers or even you know that. I actually vlog every time I go to a sex club, the before I say what I'm nervous about, whatever, or who I'm meeting, and then I show the after. And nice. sometimes it's a good night, sometimes it's not a good night. But I have gone to many unicorn nights. Some were fantastic, and some I titled the video, was it unicorn or third wheel night? Oh. So, let's just say there's a little bit of a misconception about how unicorns are are approached and maybe it's because with maybe a, a ratio of five unicorns for per 50 to 70 couples maybe no one thinks it's worth their effort because there's so much competition therefore no one fucking asks like i had people who are friendly and inquire if i was open to to playing like later or whatever but no one hit on me. No, I, I was, okay, here's the other thing that kind of was weird. I had a couple I knew who I might sleep with and a couple that I that were viewers to my channel and I had introduced them as a potential match because I'm a matchmaker in the club. And I thought, hmm, I could be with both of them. So I could have a five them. Like mm-hmm. I'm leveling up here, you know? Right, and what's right. funny is it fell apart. It fell apart. <laughs> they, they Both couples hooked up, but with different people. Uh, and I was left with fucking no nothing in my vagina, and I was like, okay. Uh, I went home empty-handed. Oh, so such I'm a telling you, us unicorns can strike out too. <laughs> That's so interesting because I keep hearing over and over and over again how couples start off with a third, and the third is usually a woman, and mm-hmm. so. I guess, I don't know. It's got to be hit and miss. I I wonder if either the dynamic in the lifestyle has changed over time from like when we first started where that was really the the thing Mm -hmm. or or it's just too intimidating to walk up to an attractive single woman and make that connection. Like maybe everybody feels safer behind a keyboard making that connection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's the thing about the lifestyle too, is you really have to grow into your confidence. We did that as well. If you're an introvert, we both identify as introverts, but we've learned to be amniverts and we have to turn it on. It's it's almost like I step into an acting job. It's not, but it's, it's not who I really am 24 seven, right? I prefer to be quiet and then to myself, but in the right social setting, I need a lot of activity, a lot of stimulation to bring me up because it's very, uh, a lot of social interaction can be depleting. So if there's not a lot of music, a lot of uh, people, I I, I have to feed off of that. (laughs) Like kind of like a, maybe I'm a social vampire. I don't know what you call that, but it's draining. And so I, I've learned to adapt, right? Because you have to, it's a social environment. You have to be able to, to do that and, and, and ask for what you want. I never used to ask for what I want. I got tired of having shitty sexual experiences and I was like, screw that. I'm going to say, do this. I want that, you know, harder, faster, slower, you know, flip me over. Right. Because we're there to have a pleasurable experience. And if you can't ask for what you want, you're going to be disappointed. 
because someone once said a long time ago, you're in charge of your own orgasm. Mm. Right? So the lifestyle has really taught me to be very confident, be more of an extrovert, and to ask for what I want. And to learn what you want. I know a lot yes. of people, when I help them fulfill their fantasies, I was like, so what can I hook you up with? And they're like, I'm like, well, do you like rough sex? They're like, oh. what, do you, what do you mean? Like, not everyone. Some people know. Yeah. But the look on of the of the look of pondering yeah. on people's faces when you ask them what they like in sex is confusing to me because I'm like, wow, we've got so far to go still. Um, but <laughs> yes. But then when we they, they land the play, they're like, okay, I want this and I want to be touched and I want to be, you know, re affirmations. I don't want degrading. Like they they can be clear. Then I do my little hustle thingy, which again is not for money. I do this for for, for, for promo, whatever. For, for what is that word? Pro bono. Pro bono. Pro bono, mm -hmm. pro boner. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, right. So I basically match make out these clubs and my, my friends, I help them have gangbangs and stuff on the DTF <gasps> at the sex club. But they're down to fuck night. Mm. Um, and so I got their, their order. I'm like, okay, so you want, you know, you want to be choked. You want, you know, be called a dirty whore. Like, so I, one girl went, <laughs> and I, I'm telling you, I had so much going on that I had to go to whiteboard. Because I would have to write down one girl's rules, limits, whatever on one side, and then turn it around. The other one says no anal, call her a whore, like, you know, the other what they want. And I would literally set this whiteboard up and greet men with the, you know, onboarding that they needed to be invited into the gangbang. And I would monitor it. I would make sure condoms wow. were used. And, uh, nice. and I'd to be able to get the exact experience they, they wanted. So this is so you know, cool. Wait, so then where did this yep. take place? In the club or in a, like at a hotel that you in arranged? It started with my dry spell, you know, like I was not getting any and I was looking around and I was like, you know, you can just help, <laughs> you know, you see something, you see something that you're like, I'm an, I'm an extrovert, right? I'm, I'm somebody who's like a matchmaker, you know, I can do this. And so I'm like, if only that person would talk to that person or, you know, and so now when I wasn't having sex, I didn't have sex for a few months and I was still going to the clubs regularly. Um, and so I would be using my time to help my friends fuck and stuff. But That's I got nice. so much fulfillment out of it. Like truly enjoyed watching and helping and facilitating. <sighs> because I also taught them how to, and I don't want to, you know, sound like I have an ego, but how to be better at sex for themselves too. Mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. so one of the examples is I was, because I lean over these situations. I'm part of them at the scene, even if I'm not touching. And so sometimes I'll say to the, to the, to the woman, you know, are you enjoying it? And I'm like, make sure you let him know that, right? Because if she's sitting there not saying anything, the guy's not getting any feedback. I'm like the voice. I'm the third wheel. I'm the backseat driver being like, hey, have you said his dick feels nice yet? Because I haven't heard it. And then <laughs> she's like, oh, it feels good, right? And then I'm like, you know, is he doing a good job eating you out? And she's like, you know, I'm like, what could he do differently? Oh, a little more pressure. And so he's like, oh, yeah. So I'm like, okay, she's learning how to ask for what she wants. And he's and she's also giving him or her the opportunity to deliver, which is always a, oh, a hard yeah. thing for these people to do without a map, you know? So <sighs> that's yeah. so cool. I like what you're doing. That's I'm yeah. you're marketing this right as a service, because I think this well, is really important. You're like sex coach with yeah. um Gosh, that was the other word. According what to else? my lawyer, I can't be a therapist, but I'm a sex <sighs> coach. <laughs> you, 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 you just call yourself a sex catalyst. Yeah. You well, just kick the yeah. party off. She's like also like a boner and pussy whisperer too. That too. She's like... And here's the fun part. I also have a, I, I saw some people who I dominate in the middle of these scenes that I run. So oh. one of them is a, is a woman named, I call her Miss Jyla Valentine. She's in a, a male-female partnership. And sometimes they come to the club together and she wants a gangbang and her husband and her boyfriend wants to either watch or help the participate. And so I'll pick the men, I'll, you know, run the thing, yeah. but then I'll walk in and I'll grab her hair and I'll, are you being a good girl for them? And I'll like shove her head on their dick and yes. make them, you know, I'll make, I'm like, don't, don't be gentle with her. Like I'll walk around and be like, make sure you treat her like a slut or she won't feel good tonight. Like I <laughs> literally like mental fuck, like mental psychology, mental mind fucks to be like, giving them the psychological shit that they asked for like right. not the, i don't call her a slut she wants me to call her a slut exactly you know so i was like getting so much fulfillment out of literally just pushing her pulling her hair 
like slapping her ass like i would finger her while she was like taking a bunch of men's dicks in their mouth and at one point i heard her talking and i said if i can hear you speaking you're not sucking dick <laughs> so like that was her clue to get back on the dick because i wasn't there to you know have a mediocre slut i was there to offer up a high class slut and so that's how i would treat her in front of people right because we have this dynamic where this is just how it goes right i'm not a horrible person i just we have this dynamic so yeah there's so much more to it sometimes than just for me watching and, and helping match me sometimes i'm in the middle of it nice you know? yeah yeah it's, it's like sexual stuff. fantasy island yeah i'm like a sexual fantasy consultant maybe or like you know like how do you because i can give advice for example here's a great example uh somebody i know in the lifestyle confessed after some reluctant you know reluctant their fantasy and they said, don't worry, I've asked my husband to go make sure it happens. And so she told me what it was. And I was like, oh, that's, that it can't happen that way. I'm sorry, it can't happen that way. What, you know, she wanted to be alone. She wanted to be standing in the sex club. And she wanted a man to come up behind her and not say anything to her. Mm. And like m- grab her, finger her, whatever. Don't, and I was like, honey, she, they don't have consent. Like, well, he can give, and I was like, no, your husband can't give consent. So you would need to have a consensual discussion, maybe in the hallway with some people, give them your fantasy, let them come and discover you. I'm like, that's the only way that this would be. And I said, if you otherwise tried, you may go home with not getting fucked and not know why. And it's not because you're not attractive. It's because people don't want to go to jail. Like people don't (laughs) want to be like, oh, I'm going to, is that the right girl that I'm supposed to walk up to and just finger? Is that one or that one? You know, no, no, no one's going to do that, hopefully. So right. I like to help people because sometimes their fantasies are their fantasies, but when you try to actually bring them to life, they don't see the, I would call them workflow issues. Yeah. Um, because I'm a workflow analyst by day, so I'm a fantasy director by night. Um, right. But yeah, it's it's one of those things where I like to help because I want them to have those fantasies and they yeah. don't know the barrier. They can't. I, that's fabulous. And, and, and I've heard several podcasts try uh, husbands uh, coordinate gangbangs for the women and it is work i mean there is some definite coordination to that and i commend you for for doing that for others because that's fabulous i mean they get to show up for the fantasy and they don't have to do you know all that vetting and um that's planning that's pretty nice um and hmm. here's an extra element that i didn't mention yet but i actually have a a very um i don't know how to word this but I come across on my whole YouTube channel with a very, like an admiration and respect for men. I studied women's studies in university and wrote papers on how men were oppressed under patriarchy because it's also worth mentioning, not just the other side, right? Mm -hmm. And so I have always been in this lifestyle to represent the single man as well and their needs and their issues too. And so when I run a scene, I have hard limits for for the people I help because they have hard limits, no anal, right? Whatever. My hard limit is that I'm not there to ruin anyone's night. And if someone is not welcome at a gangbang, there's polite ways to disinvite them. We're not going to embarrass anybody if their dick doesn't work. Like I say this to the people and they consent before I'll continue. Because these are real people, real guys that have shown up to take a chance. And I see the nervousness and vulnerability in them where maybe other people yeah. don't. Right. right. And I'm right. an empath too. I feel it, right? And so for me, I want those men, no matter if their dick fails them or not, to feel supported to feel invited and that they were part of something fun and not that they are, you know, I, I'm not gonna lie, I've seen people discard men in the middle of a scene because their dick went down. Oh. I, you know, you, 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 can, you can imagine that that happens because they have a, you know, oh, your dick's down, we need a new dick, we need a new dick, I knew that, you know, I understand. But that poor person now is gonna go home with that feeling sure. of being worth nothing more than his erection. Right, right. right? And so I'm just, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, facilitate something like that so sure. for me i like that it's really well balanced on, my, on all of the sides as well and i also ask the men what is it that you like do you want to come in her you know do you want to come in her mouth are you looking for somebody to come down her throat like let me match you up because it's it's the guys are there for something too you know yeah wow i love that nobody does that checking calendar and Check, travel trips yep. to toronto if you do come to toronto i would be happy to facilitate whichever scene you could come up with but i would have to be i would have to be able to weigh in on the night that you show up because you, you can't have a gangbang on like a random monday you won't have enough supplies <laughs> so. yeah you gotta have the right players in the club to, to yes. make something like that happen yes. for sure <sighs> 
So one of the clubs is a spa and like scenario. The other one is more of a get down, get busy, you know, and, you know, every three or four hours, then, then they have to clean it for the next group of people that come in. What about, there's three more clubs, right? Yeah, so then there's NYX Lounge and the X Club, which are similar in that they are, you know, they have a nice DJ, uh, there is a dance floor, a bar, you know, lounge area. And then X Club, they have the back room where you have to go change, you know, you get out of your street clothes, change into either lingerie, naked, a towel, whatnot. And then you can go into the back play areas. NYX, NYX Lounge is similar. There is some play areas amongst the crowd above them but you can see them that's different than the other mm. one but otherwise they're kind of similar um i would say m club m4 sometimes has a dance floor but sometimes you show up and that whole part of the club's closed so like it's a it's hit or miss when the dance floor is even open wow so uh, yeah so those are the ones that i have been to that i could describe yeah are the dance are the uh, playrooms all equally nice and clean and all that um, they're not all equally private i mean that's what's interesting is is nyx lounge all the beds had these curtain thingies that you could just close like it's like your princess bed right, right. And i i you, know, you don't have that privacy at oasis oasis there is no privacy unless you re- reserve the fourth floor private room which is first come first serve you know oh. and so otherwise there's no privacy you're, you're in sight of people i like that though so most yeah. of the clubs are yeah that makes sense twist isn't private like that it has a few cubbies so to speak where you can do private things but for the most part it's all out in the open which is what we love we're exhibitionists so that fits the bill for for us so yeah i have to mention one thing about the introvert so i i met some introverted people at the club the other day and i was just me i was my own comedian self and I was talking about how I can't wait to do a video on how the introverts can survive at a sex club. And I, and I hid myself behind the curtain and I was like, you can watch from behind the curtain. Like, I was like, you don't have to socialize. Don't be the and things like that. Um, because it's a real struggle, right? The, like introverts have, have a real struggle to be around all of this stuff. But the, the thing that helped us the most was to just keep going. And eventually the environment started to become more comfortable because the scene was comfortable. It became predictable. The crowd became predictable. And with that level of comfort, then I could relax and yeah. be, you know, more open and more, you know, more extroverted. And and the, the number one kind of tr- trick or tip that we throw out for new swingers or people who are maybe going for the first time to some new environment is introduce yourself to at least one couple at least one couple that's that's your commitment for the night and what it does it it forces you to break the ice and start the ball rolling because once you've had that conversation you loosen up a little bit you have some fun and then you go oh there's another cute couple and i've already done this one so i kind of feel okay and then you go and have more fun I did video tours of all the sex clubs and I actually mentioned on some of my videos about you need to know where you can cry if you're a girl and you need a moment (laughs) you need to know if there's a spot where you could go and like have a moment because (laughs) I've cried for a few reasons not related to necessarily anything at the club but if you're having an anxiety attack if you're an introvert and need to get a minute away Mm -hmm. I feel like that's the kind of stuff that would help with on my channel to be like these are the clubs that I recommend if you're introverted because there is privacy and there right. is quiet spaces, right? Or versus the other ones that don't. So yeah, this is a good topic I'll probably bring up. And, and when I do it, you'll know it's a bit of a wink to you guys. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I did just start my own podcast, which is called Sex and Swinging with Toronto Unicorn. It's on all of the same streaming sites I'm sure that you guys are. And uh, basically, I am using it as a way to walk people through the swinger lifestyle from my single woman perspective in a really, I would say, hopefully vulgarly charming way. Uh, I'm not your, you know, polished, book smart kind of girl. Like, I, I am university educated, but I talk street smart. And that is how I roll. So that's how I that's how I educate. And uh, and I hope people check out the podcast as well as my YouTube channel and see what it's like to actually live day to day as a swinger when I show my life up through blogs and story time videos, some of them that have gotten my channel stripes. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. Very nice. I just got out of YouTube jail today because I was I was in jail again for a week. Oh no. <laughs> no. Oh, no. That's when you know you're doing a good job. Yeah.
now. That's when I know I need to go to a fucking podcast so that I can <laughs> effing swear. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, but yeah, so turningyourfriend.com has all of my links. So I want to ask you guys some stuff now. Are you ready? Yeah. Sure. So did you start with a woman between you? Did you have a couple no. of properly tell me about that? No, that was way too threatening. I, for everybody, it's like the thing. But for me, that was like, oh, heck no. That that was like, mm-mm, I am not comfortable with any other woman being with my man. And because I wasn't identifying as bi, you know, it wasn't it wasn't comfortable for me. Uh, so uh, we just started off as, you know, same room soft swap with, you know, uh, actually, it was more like a same room, same bed with a little, you know, touching. But before you touched, you would have to ask, you know, can I touch your boob, you know, right? So it was very progressive for the first, I don't know, four or five experiences. But then once we kind of figured that out, it was, it was no turning back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then you did, now you do full swap stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, but we also really love soft swap. And we know a lot of couples that will only, you know, play in, unless you're a full swap couple oh we don't care because there's so many fun things you can do without penetrative sex i mean the menu is vast of of those experiences and for, for me it's about the pleasure it's not about penetration so i mean i can have a really great time without penetration so it's yeah you know we we, we never take that off the table and that's what's so great with the lifestyle is that you can, as long as you're upfront about what you're looking for, mm-hmm. you don't have to be on a, you don't have to be apologetic about it. You can just match with people who are where you're at and what you're looking for, what you're looking for. And, uh, and that's why I, I don't shame any, in any of the couples for all their rules, even though the sass in my voice, when you hear my podcast <laughs> talks <laughs> about, especially episode uh, six, I think is called how to be safe emotionally and physically in the lifestyle. How can you, how, how could you possibly let your husband or fuck someone else? Like, how, like I talk about it. How could you do it? And so, um, what I one of the one of the phrases I said is, you know, people come in with all these, these rules, right? About no kissing, you know, no penetration, whatever. And I and I, I like to say it as a single woman. I said, well, you know, I would never want to join a couple who had a no kissing rule, for example, because to me that just screams of insecurity, and mm. I don't want feel like I'm joining an ounce of insecurity. I want to be cherished, invited. I want a red carpet rolled straight to the dick. You know, I want to feel completely cherished as a guest and not, oh, it, it, you know, th- we're, this whole no, but that whole, no, fuck off. It's all or nothing. That's how I feel. <laughs> right. I'm, you know, I, I get, I come a bit unapologetic about it, but it's because I've learned also that as a as a single woman unicorn, I've had I've had in the middle of sex somebody decline to kiss me when I went to kiss them because they had decided that they didn't like that or didn't want to. Mm. And again, everyone learns where their boundary is, and, and that's fine. But learning that, le- taking that away from me, it was like, yeah, I don't want to feel like I'm only, you know, wanted for one hole. Right. One right. You know. So, I guess for me that wasn't a match, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's I think the most challenging part is that when you're when you're still experiencing things and trying to navigate through and figure out, do I like this? Do I like like that? And, you know, and the rules change and the boundaries change so can change so quickly. It almost felt like we were constantly updating our profile. And at one point, right. you know, even though we advocate for making your profile as current as it can be shit changed so so fast you know and so people will read the profile and and they're like well i thought you were into this well you know that that changed last week with the last experience and now i'm into this right so like that's where the communication comes in and almost honestly meeting people face to face and having that communication what do you like that that's you know that's your elevator speech right there don't rely on the profile this is what i want this is what i'm into and you yeah. go from there because they're right there, right? And you have that communication right there. Um, we have had a few bait and switch situations where, you know, we think they're all on board and then all of a sudden we get back to the room and the woman's like, oh no, I just want to watch. And you're like, wait, 
what? Right. So yeah. poor Ed is now lounging on the bed watching me and we're like, wait, we didn't um, sign up for that scenario. So not, not that I didn't enjoy watching her, <laughs> but it would have been nice to have had a little more interaction. Yeah. Yeah. So as a result, you know, once we discovered that this, that, that nothing was going to be going on with, with the other woman and Ed, I'm like, oh, heck no. I'm like, OK, I'm cutting this short. Like, because I didn't want Ed to feel left out. Right. And of course not. I'm like, wait a minute. What, what happened with this transaction here? So we're like, okay, I'm done. That's true. I'm not <sighs> sure if that happens. I've seen some bisexual women. Uh, only it's only happened once in front of me, but basically she went for a couple solely to have the woman without telling the man that. <sighs> basically just, just wouldn't acknowledge him in the threesome. Just was like, you know, and I just felt terrible for the guy. Like I was like, oh my god, like that's. I feel bad for the from the unicorn side to a, for somebody to selfishly do that. Uh, that's not fair. Like she just wanted to to eat pussy that badly, I guess. But um, but that's still like that's that's not ethical. Like you know what I mean? That's not consensual. When right. you're coming in, saying, well, I want to join the two of you, but you know, you get the fuck you go sit over there. Your dick's not welcome. I would not like that either. Yeah, um, and um, I I, I, I oh, I'm, make, oh sorry, go ahead. I'm reading that's about that hard. a lot on the Facebook groups. That tends to happen a lot, um, mm -hmm. and it's it, it's really frustrating and. I guess, I mean, we did encounter some of that too. What, what's what been the most challenging, hands down, is meeting people online. You go for a coffee date or a drink date or whatever kind of dinner date thing, and it just never plays out. You spend all that time getting ready, you get all worked up, you think the communication was great, you get there and it's want want, or they change their mind, or there's a bait and switch, or whatever. And I'm like, you know what, screw that. I'm done with that, I'm just gonna meet the person in real life, I can read their nonverbal communication, I can flirt with them, I can give them the kissing test, and if they pass, then we're on. But if not, you know what? There's 60 other people here at this party that, you know, are potentially available, and so then you just move to the next one. And then you're like, you know, your night's not ruined, and hopefully you you can have, uh, you know, the experience that maybe you or were looking for. It's, and that's what I love about clubs is as everyone who's online with a profile who is within vicinity of a club, I'm like, get out, get offline, go to the fucking club, because those people also are there to have sex with people on the same night. They have a babysitter. Maybe they have, you know, they've shown up to the same physical location, right. wanting the yeah. same thing. You will never statistically have better odds than that. And so that's why even if you don't like the couple that you meet, well, then you go to the bar and you talk to a different couple. You have statistically the most incredible odds at sex clubs, even just to network with other people. And yeah. one of the other places that I network that I hope that you guys even, you know, hopefully I see you on there one day. I should also mention, I have, been, I have never been paid by Oasis to, to promote them or anything along those lines. I just love it. It just changed my life and I give them a lot of free promotion. But basically they have a virtual platform that was created out of the pandemic and mm -hmm. lived on and so um when they closed the sex clubs in, in canada we had this virtual space where people were we were all really reluctant at first we show up we turn on our webcams and it was literally a bunch of swingers in their bedrooms <laughs> and you can see people fuck and we were like <laughs> It's virtual swinging. There's virtual <laughs> swinging. And at first we're like, who the fuck would do virtual swinging? But when you don't have the other alternative in front of you, it's better than nothing than no swinging. And so there's something about even just networking with people in the lifestyle, going on camera. If you're an exhibitionist, you know, even just jerking your camera off in front of an audience, some people really enjoy that. Now there's a place where you can do that and you don't get blocked. You know, you don't have to do that on my Instagram feed every right. month or my DM. So it's one of those things, the virtual swinger space has been a great a place of community and connection for me too. And you guys don't have a club near you that's like, like sex clubs, but hopefully you guys can at least find some virtual spaces to connect because seeing someone, uh, seeing somebody on camera, like even a Discord chat or something, if they're in your area, then you already have a head start. Who cares what the profile says if you've got chemistry a bit, you know, like in a way you're like, okay, as long as you've got the charm off the camera, there's less work to do in person. You know, oh, yeah, 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 that sounds fun. Yeah, maybe we'll give that a try. Hmm. Yeah. Well, and then I have some questions for you guys as a couple. Huh? You guys have been together ten years, but swinging for roughly three. You said uh, podcasting for three, swinging for 
Oh. Gosh. N- nine years. Nine or ten. Yeah. Oh, I got that backwards. Okay. Yeah. I got that backwards. Yeah. Um, so I would love to know how you keep it safe, how you feel safe being a swinger and sharing and evolving because you said you went from soft swap to to, to who, 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 who fucks. As long as I got my popcorn, I can watch. It's fine. That's, like, that's evolution. <laughs> yeah. So I want to know how do you feel safe and how do you continue to feel safe? And also any tips that you have that maybe you learned the hard way or whatnot that you could pass along for a new couple that might be uh, help them be successful. Safe. You know, safety, our community is really great. I, I've never not felt safe. I have felt nervous in the beginning because I didn't know what to expect and I thought people were going to attack me, but no one ever did. Um, there's always security at every house party that we go to and any kind of um, club that's, you know, or uh, we didn't really have a club. There was kind of a sort of a club here on the down low, but they always had security too. But I guess the bottom line is Everyone that runs a house party here always has someone at the front door. And if the party's really big, they have someone roaming around the party, too, to make sure everyone's safe. They take care of, make sure they take care of people that have, you know, been drinking too much. They don't let them drive home drunk. Um, they, you know, it's it's nice. It's great. It's just kind of a, a known fact that you you just have someone watching over the crowd so that everyone you know, feel safe and everyone kind of behaves, right? <laughs> yeah. But. And can I drill in and ask specifically, how do you feel safe as an introvert? How do you feel safe as a, as in your relationship to expand and be a swinger? Yeah, I, I think a lot of, that kind of stuff. yeah, yeah. I think a lot of the, the safety that we kind of feel with each other in terms of being comfortable playing uh, exposing our relationship to new experiences and pot- potentially things that can risk the marriage, right? Like, I think that's a lot of people's concern is, mm. and and one of our concerns very early on, which was, is, is this going to break us? Like, is this going to tear us apart? Are we going to lose that special thing that we had by doing this? And we thought about it, and most of kind of the guardrails that we put up with with, with our relationship were being comfortable talking about anything, no matter how you're feeling or, or what you're going through, you have to be able to bring it up and you have to be comfortable with talking about it. So creating in a sense, a safe space for both people to, to express their feelings, express their, their lusts and have the other person be open to hearing about it. And it, it worked really well for us we used to sit in the backyard. We'd have a little bonfire going in, in our little fire pit, sit there with a little glass of uh, whiskey and and have long conversations about how we were feeling and how that last event went and how she felt about some interaction that we'd had with a, a couple. And we worked through so many of our feelings and our anxieties. Insecurities. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would always ask Ed after every event, so was her pussy tight? Like, what, did it feel different? And he's like, uh, um, no, I didn't really notice. He's like, uh, you know, it wasn't any tight or loose than, you know, normal. He's like, it was just different. <laughs> but I always asked him that because that was my insecurity, right? right. Someone's going to feel better, right? Like, I'm going to be less than, you know? And, and then there were certain uh, types of people that I was like, no, just based on like, (laughs) just the way they looked. I'm like, she's out. (laughs) And for (laughs) some reason, and I didn't necessarily have a reason. It was just like the way she looked. I'm like, no. Or the way she approached us. Or the way she approached. So if a woman was very aggressive and very flirty and she didn't engage with me first, I was very threatened by that. And I didn't like that. Right. And so I learned from that and I thought, oh, gosh, you know, I don't want to make sure I don't make somebody else feel like that. So uh, trial and error. And then, um, you know, Ed always made me feel very um, comfortable and safe by 
his just acceptance and constantly being there. And I would say to, oh, say to him time and time again, I know what I'm saying isn't going to make any sense. Logically, I, I know, you know, X, Y, Z, but my emotional side is going A, B, C, right? I know this doesn't sound like, and I would have this, just this, these weird disconnects of, I had a really great time, but now the next day my brain's going, oh, you couldn't have had a great time because that doesn't fit with your upbringing and that, that doesn't fit with this social setting and that doesn't fit with this rule brick and you know, all this stuff. And so then the next day I'd have all this fallout from all the programming that you know I just grew up with. And then, so I had to go through and just remember like, yeah, but last night you were fine. You had a great time, right? Yeah. Okay, so then now you're just mentally fucking yourself with all the rules and BS that you grew up right. with. Right. So there was a bit of that to just try and shed the, de you know, deprogramming of things that, you know, it's not okay to, to feel great. It's not okay to prance around naked in front of people. It's not, right? All that baloney, yeah. right? It's just... It was insidious. And then the other thing that really made me mad was like, I had been in therapy for years, like in my 20s. My whole 20s was just therapy after therapy after therapy because my life was effed. And I didn't really start living my life till I was 30s. And I was like, good, I'm good, I'm great. I'm like, I graduated. I'm like, I finally got life figured out. And then, then we start swinging and I'm like, what's this shit coming back up again? I'm like, <laughs> So, again, but you know what? I like the challenge because I like growth. I don't like being confined. I don't like having judgments. I don't like having, you know, I, I'm, I'm always constantly trying to figure out why did, why did that trigger me? Hmm, maybe I should look at that because other, otherwise it just bugs me. It just right. sits, it sits and stews and I don't like that. Yeah. And, and, and like one of the pieces of advice that I'll give to, to new swingers is, you don't know what you're going to enjoy. You don't know what's going to scare you until you actually try it. Yeah. But you have to be comfortable pulling the ripcord and saying, time out. I need to back out of this. We need to talk about this. And and do it gracefully, right? Just go, I, I need to get a glass of water, honey. Will you come with me? And then go offline. Go talk about it. Figure it out on on your own. But it's okay to, to, to have an oh shit moment and have to talk about it like that's okay and it's okay to say you know i wasn't comfortable with this or i was actually really comfortable with this and i wanted to keep going further but we had this rule you know i wasn't supposed to kiss the unicorn <laughs> but i really want to kiss the unicorn <laughs> or what happens if someone forgets and then the, you know the kiss ha oh shit what happens then right it's right. like right so there's there's sensitivities here too. Yeah. 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 And, and it's important to respect each other's rules and boundaries, right? And and not to to blow past them. We were just reading about a, a couple where the the husband was constantly doing things that he wasn't supposed to. And of course the general advice from for most of the people in the forum were time to time to get out. Like that's not okay. Um and People make mistakes in the heat of the moment. You know, you're turned on. Your brain's not fully working. I mean, the other brain's yeah. working full time. <laughs> so, like, give each other a break sometimes. Somebody's going to step out and do something that's not okay. And in the moment, it was a it was a mistake. But give them the benefit of the doubt. Come back together. Talk about it. Figure it out. And go, yeah, I know. I, I got excited. And that's okay. That's okay. But talk about it. Yeah. yeah. It's true. And I have one example of, I used to be partnered um, when I, when I would have swinger experiences. So some of these experiences, I had one where it was a couple, it was a couple swap, but it was foursome. It was a foursome. And so I had one guy behind me having sex with me and then the, the boyfriend, girlfriend in front of me. And we all did this three-way kiss while this other guy was fucking me. And then he told me later that he felt left out. Oh. And I was like, you were in me. <laughs> and you felt left out, right? Oh. But he did. And that was good that he told me that because I would have never known. Right. Right. 
Mm -hmm. um, and so in the future, would I do a three-way kiss without him? No, probably not. I would try to make it more inclusive. But and and, and I just felt it, it was it was great of him to tell me that because that, how can I be a good partner if I don't even know what I'm doing that could be causing any sort of trigger or, or issue? You know? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's a big risk, especially for couples that have been together for a long time. The assumption that your partner knows you. Mm -hmm. Well, they knew you going to, you know, the, the ball game, going to a vacation, going to a, a nightclub as a couple. But they don't know you in the context of swinging with other people and having sex with other people. That is a new context. And you're going to have to figure out a whole bunch of stuff all over again. Mm hmm. But uh, I just want to say that this lifestyle for me, like you said at the beginning, Afib, about it, it's not just about the sex. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest takeaways for me as a woman is the is the bond that I can have with women who still fuck the same men as me. Unheard of in vanilla world. If I if I sat on that dick one time, that guy was off limits to my friends. Yep. Right. And yep. now I'm like, you got to try his dick. You know, it's fantastic. Yes. Like, it, now it's just so different. And I and it's true. I mean it when I when I let my friends, you know, know that this guy is great and that I would, you know, he, he's a great fuck because I've seen my friends fuck my my friends, my yeah. other friends. And it is absolutely fantastic. So there's one guy I'm actually sleeping with right now. And the reason I'm sleeping with him is because I watched him fuck my friend and he did such a fantastic job that I got interested and I and then I you know got to know his personality and then I wanted a turn and so my friend and I talked about it because I actually was like you know I just want to do a girl code check-in making sure you're not upset it's not even his wife his wife he has a wife but she's like no no it's all good because even though I knew it was all good there's still something about being like I'm gonna sit on that dick next all right you, you know that right I'm gonna, you know because then she told me oh well you know don't don't be afraid to ask for oral he's good at it and I was like oh okay thanks Think about that. Think about two women in vanilla world having that conversation over a guy that one of them had sex with. Like, it would never happen. Not, yeah. not, not, not in a world that I lived in. Nope. And no. so that is the best part of the spare lifestyle outside of all of the sex is the bond that we can have women, especially without that competition. And when sex finally yeah. doesn't become the thing that separates us from other women, we can finally coexist in a way in a way that I think men always have in a way. And I think that it's kind of it's kind of nice that we can not be so uptight about sex as much. Oh my gosh, yeah. I had I have completely forgotten about that or didn't ever really look at it like that and you're absolutely right. I have that same uh, friendship with somebody and she's always curating new new guys and she's sending me his, their, you know, their photos and she's like, "Look who I'm bringing to the party tonight." I'm like, "Okay. I'll let you have him first. I always know I get him second. <laughs> And so it's great because she, <laughs> she always finds these guys. I'm like, oh, look who, she, look she, who she's bringing the, to the party tonight. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, it's yeah, there's none of that weirdness there. I just love that. I love it. I love it. Too. So uh, any last words before we end off the, the, the chat? Yeah, we are going to promote our... Costa Rica vacation, which we would love everyone to come to. It's in Jaco, Costa Rica. It is actually, the country is actually safer than the United States. So uh, if you have any um, inhibitions about going to a different country, don't. The people are wonderful. They have a, a phrase called Pura Vida. It's kind of like in Australia, like no worries. Or in Hawaii, what do they say? Uh, well, not aloha, but they, there's a phrase for just like, eh, whatever, whatever, right? And so this resort is a small resort. It's it's uh, 20 rooms. And so it's nice and intimate. You can be naked ev everywhere at the resort 100% of the time. Uh, if you go to, to eat, you know, obviously you just put a towel down. And uh, you can be naked at the pool. You can be fucking at the pool. Um, there'll be pool parties. There are actually two excursions that we're going on that are already paid for as part of your price. And then you have free days that you can go do excursions as well. If you, you know, want to hang out at the pool, you do. If you want to go zip line or ATV, whatever, you can go do that also. And then you know, free transportation to and from the airport. It's really an amazing price. And of course, all, you know, all inclusive food, alcohol, all that stuff. And then the town, the small beach town Hako is right near the resort. And you just 
walk and go hang out in town if you want, have some great food, it's safe. Um, so we're super excited to be hosting it for people that want to come join us and we'll be doing some podcasting there and some classes. Oh yeah. And there's classes because there's a, you know, a, a room, obviously a sex room. And so we'll have a class on the Sibian. We'll have, uh, a flogging class. We'll have a squirting class. Yeah, we'll have, class. oh, I can't remember what the other classes are. And then of course, nightly themes too. So we'll have pole dance lessons, uh, um, poker night, poker night, and what's the other one? We learn how to salsa. Tequila and rum tasting. Tequila and rum tasting. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff. There's planned. a it's lot going fun. on. So it's all designed to bring everybody together to, you know, so that you, you're spending time together and you're building those relationships and that sense of community. So we're super excited. Right. On top of that, we have our YouTube channel. We have a website. Uh, so swingeruniversity.com. You can get access to all of our, our content. And uh, we have a, a links page as well. So if you're interested in, in all of our socials, it's swinglinks.club. And all of our fun stuff is there, including some of our spicy content, which <laughs> we don't put up on the rest of the social media stuff because we'll get banned and shut down. Uh -huh. And that's not okay. Right. Yeah. So we... Um... Awesome. Can I ask, um, sorry, we didn't actually mention when the Costa Rica trip is. I want to make sure we tell people when. <laughs> That's right. The Costa Rica trip is this June, June 2023. Awesome. And we, so, and you guys will be there? So if they show, if people show up, they'll be able to meet you? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, in awesome. addition to being in attendance, um, we're hoping to do some podcasty things there too and broadcast. I don't remember how good the Wi-Fi was there. We had some problems on the ship uh, this last time, but the, the goal is to broadcast uh, while yeah. we're there. Yeah. That's so cool. That's so cool. Well, thank you guys. This is a thrill to be able to hang out with you virtually and, and, and share stories and tips. We both contribute differently in the same space, and uh, that's just like it's reminiscent of the swinger world, right? Yes. Right. So we all have different choices and different things to contribute. So thank you for doing this full spot with me tonight. <laughs> this is a different kind of full spot, but it is. I love it. Well, thank you very much for having us on. We've we've enjoyed being on your show and uh, having you on our show as well. Thank you so much. It's been fun.